pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. In order to maximize revenue, we have to begin by understanding what revenue actually is. We can define revenue as the number of units sold times the price per unit. In function notation, we could call it r of x is equal to x times p of x. x would be the number of units sold, and then the price per unit would be p of x. And it turns out that we're going to have to come up with an expression for p of x. Now the question notes that one additional unit will remain vacant for each $10 increase in rent. And we can translate that in the following way. Every time the price goes up by $10, or a positive $10, then the number of units sold is going to go down by 1, or negative 1. Now this can be simplified to just negative 10. And the fact that there is a consistent reduction in the number of units depending on each $10 increase suggests that the price function is a linear function whose slope is equal to negative 10. So in other words, we can begin to write p of x as a linear function with a negative 10 slope and y-intercept that we'll call b for now. And it turns out that our next challenge will be to find b. Well, we know that the price is $800 when all 100 units are being used. So that can be translated as p of 100 is equal to 800. Again, that just means that the price when all 100 units are being used is equal to $800. So we can fill in 800 right here, and for x, we can fill in 100. And then we can multiply the negative 10 by 100, and then when we add 1,000 over to the other side, we can see that b is equal to 1,800. So the price function can be written in its final form as follows. And once we have that expression for price, we can substitute it into our revenue equation over here. And then, of course, we can simplify by distributing the x. And that leaves us with our final revenue function. Once we have that, remember, we're trying to actually maximize the revenue. And to do that, we can simply take the derivative of the revenue function. So our prime of x would become negative 20x to the first power plus 1800. The next step, of course, would be to set the derivative equal to 0. We could subtract 1800 from both sides. And then when we divide by negative 20, we end up with x equaling 90. Now to verify that this value of x actually does in fact maximize the revenue, we have to keep in mind that x can vary from 0 all the way up to 100. It is possible that 0 units would be sold, and of course it's possible that all 100 units would be sold. And so since we have a closed interval, we will have to use the closed interval method to confirm that x equals 90 does indeed maximize revenue. In other words, we're going to have to find the revenue when the number of units sold is 0, we'll have to find the revenue when the number of units sold is 90, and then also when the number of units sold is 100. So we're going to plug those into our revenue function over here. We plug in 0 and we can see that the revenue is indeed 0. 90 yields a revenue of 81,000, and 100 yields a revenue of 80,000. So we can see from this method that selling 90 units will indeed maximize the revenue. So the correct answer to the question is x equals 90 units.